Alright, let's just dive right in and talk about the Rogue. By far my favorite class in the game. The Rogue is agile, he has high mobility, does a lot of damage and is an absolute blast to play with in both PvE and PvP. Now in this video I will show you the build that I am currently using. I will show you my gear and also my Paragon tree. Now do keep in mind that I am still level 70 and I am currently leveling. So my gear and Paragon tree will change over time. Um, and later in this video I will bloodmark myself and become Hatred's chosen to show you some PvP gameplay with this build. Alright. Let's start Greetings. with the abilities. I use Puncture, Twisting Blades, Shadow Step, Dash, Shadow Imbuement and Death Trap. Alright, let's take a deep dive into my build. I took Puncture, Enhanced Puncture and Fundamental Puncture. Now, Fundamental Puncture is an absolute must have because when you hit at least two blades at once, it makes the enemy vulnerable for two seconds. And as you can see, vulnerable enemies take 20% increased damage, which is huge. So don't sleep on this, take this. It's great because when you're uh, at close range, you will always hit your target with two blades. And it is a guarantee vulnerable on that hit. So take this, don't sleep on it and you'll, you'll love it. <laughs> okay, and puncture is a great attack because it's kind of a mix between range and close combat so whenever you're in a tough spot and you need to regen your energy quite fast you just take a little bit distance and you start spamming puncture and your energy is is full in no time so yes puncture very great attack i'm loving it and i am not going to switch back to anything else for a while all right next up is twisting blades i max it out five out of five and I got two extra points from an item which is very nice because those two points actually also count so I do more damage with Twisting Blades. Alright, I took Enhanced twi Twisting Blades obviously and Advanced Twisting Blades. So when your Twisting Blades return, your active cooldowns are reduced by .10 seconds per enemy they pass through up to 2 seconds which is insane because Reduce cooldowns means you can use your abilities quicker, which is just great because then you can, well, do your abilities more often, which is very handy in a fight. All right, I took Sturdy. It's um, very good to have for close damage reduction. You're a melee class. You're always going to be close range. So most of the enemies are close to you. They will surround you and you take 20 uh you take 12 percent those damage reduction so they do less damage on you and here i took the siphoning strikes this heals you for three percent of your maximum life when you critically strike close enemies which is great you um are gonna love playing with this you will feel very very tanky Make sure though, if you're running with this, um, to have your crit chance up high. So you want items that have increased crit chance and intelligence. Now I myself am a little bit slacking on that and I need to get better gear for it. Um, just recently I, I swapped out my rings because they were just overall a little bit better. But I did have to, um, yeah, I, I did have to compromise a little bit on my intelligence or on my uh, critical strike chance so I have like 4% lower than what I had but it's still it's still really good so it's I, I'm still critting a lot so it's still fine uh, but I was critting more <laughs> so it was better but right now um, yeah I'm, I'm still I'm still satisfied with the current crit strike that I crit strike chance that I have um, then I took Shadow Step and rank 7 out of 5. Again, 2 points out of item contribution. Now, this ability is very powerful. You become unstoppable and quickly move through the shadows to stab your victim from behind. 
and you gain 50% increased movement speed for two seconds afterwards. So it's it's a really good ability to just have on your uh, skill set because it is it's 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 very it's I don't even know like how to say this, but it's I'm I'm using this a lot uh, to get close to enemies and also to get to enemies that are running away. So this one is just extremely powerful. I'm loving, I'm loving it so far. Now, enhanced shadow step, obviously, and then methodical shadow step. Enemies damaged by shadow step are stunned for two seconds. So every time you shadow step, you stun the enemy for two seconds, which can come in very, very clutch. Right here, I took weapon mastery, max it out. So you do increased damage with weapons obviously so yeah i'm just gonna full stack on this one then i went for dash five out of five enhanced dash enemies damaged by dash take 15 percent increased critical strike damage from you for five seconds which of course is very strong because uh, if you're going to be critting a lot and you do more crit damage then well yeah <laughs> that's a that's a plus that's a bonus then you go for discipline dash Dash slows enemies it hits by 30% for 3 seconds. Enemy, uh, Any enemy already slowed will be dazed for 2 seconds instead. So this is very strong because with dash you can actually kind of crowd control your enemies. Um, so what I what I do a lot is I um, encounter a pack. I, I, I engage a pack of AI uh, NPCs and I just start spamming them with puncture and then with twisting blades and I dash to the other side and then I do the same there uh, put some twisting blades around me and I dash to the other side now by the time that I'm done most of the enemies are already either very low health or dead so this is just it, it's 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 very good to have don't don't sleep on this on this ability dash it's just great just take it <laughs> Now, I took Shadow Impugment. I was playing with Poison before and I was loving that. But ever since I switched to Shadow Impugment, I don't want to switch back. Um, it's just very strong. I max it out and I'm loving it. I'm not going to uh, switch it out anytime soon. So I'm going to stick with Shadow Impugment for now. Um, you imbue your weapons with Festering Shadows. Your next two imbuable skills deal shadow damage and infect enemies for 6 seconds. Infected enemies explode on death, dealing 3000 damage to all surrounding enemies. Now, they don't always die from it, obviously. Um, but if they die with the infection on, they explode. If they don't die, they will get the full amount of damage to only themselves. So it's still like it, it the, the damage is still there. So it either does it to enemies around them or and or like only to themselves, which is which is great. Now mix that with twisting blades, dash to the other side, and you'll see a lot of enemies just explode in front of your eyes. It's 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 great. <laughs> now enhanced shadow imbuement, 15% increased critical strike chance against injured enemies and uh, that are infected by shadow imbuement. Mixed shadow imbuement. Enemies infected by shadow imbuement take 12% increased non-physical damage from you for 8 seconds. So yeah, I took this uh, over this because um, I just want that 12% increase in non-physical damage. Right, so down here, death trap. Uh, it's incredibly strong. You just drop that death trap and it pulls the enemies into the death trap when it activates. And when it kills an enemy, the cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds. So you can do this ultimate a lot. Like it's the cooldown is 43.84 seconds, but I have I I barely see it at its full cooldown. Like it always it's always like 30 around 30 seconds <laughs> it's just it's just great i love it um so yeah prime death trap enemies are pulled into the death trap when it activates and if death trap kills an enemy its cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds which is just awesome because you can just do your death trap a lot you can use it quite often 
Right, for the key passive, I took close quarters combat, damaging a close enemy with marksman or cutthroat skills. Each grant you 10% attack speed bonus for 8 seconds. While both attack speed bonuses are active, you deal 20% increased damage against crowd controlled enemies. Now that is just, that is just awesome. You do more damage and you have more attack speed. <laughs> and we're using both marksman and cutthroat skills, so... You know, this this one is a, a must-have. Just trust me on this. I've I've played with uh, Victimize, I've played with um, Momentum, but I really much enjoy this one the most. So, trust me on this one. Stay close quarters combat and you'll love it. Alright, the Paragon board. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best Paragon board out there to have as a rogue. I'm still kind of playing around with it learning it and i'm just winging it <laughs> along the way this will probably look a lot different when i'm uh, level 100 uh, i wish there was like an option to uh, refund everything or something because i do want to change some things but it yeah it is what it is right now and i don't feel like refunding from here and then step by step take everything out i just want to have a button that says refund all <laughs> okay so yeah for the first cliff i took closer uh, for every five dexterity purchase within range cutthroat skills deal four percent increased damage which of course is great because we're using cutthroat skills and uh yeah we do more damage with them in total we've uh we've got 31.7 cutthroat skill damage increase and we've also got the the bonus so while wielding a melee weapon, you take 10% reduced damage. So yeah, I take 10% reduced damage and I do plus 31.7% cutthroat skill damage with this one. Which I think is quite quite nice. Now on the second board, I went for uh, legendary witness. Uh, I mean, I went for no witnesses. Uh, your ultimate skills deal 30% increased damage and grant you 10% increased damage for 20 seconds when cast. Now, the glyph I took here is combat. For every 5 intelligence purchased within range, core skills deal 4.8% increased critical strike damage. Which of course is great because we're going to be uh, running around with a high crit chance. And this just increases our damage with core skills uh, that critical critically hit enemy targets. So right now I've got 25.7 critical strike damage increasement, and I've also got the bonus uh, skills that critically strike restore 12% of their energy cost, which I think is very nice to have. Now I do very much also want to have the extra uh, armor, um, but for now I'm just running it like this, and I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, by going through here and then up and then out of the board now the next board that I'm gonna take I'm not sure what board I'm gonna take yet but I do which I do know which uh, cliff I'm gonna take and that is the exploit cliff so this one is very strong I've heard and I've um, concluded myself that yes I think this one is great to have because you do more damage to vulnerable targets and we have a lot of vulnerable targets around us all the time so yeah this this one this this is definitely a must have glyph i think i think this one is great for every single class out there not just for the rogues all right that's my paragon board right now um yeah <laughs> i don't know really what to say about this any further i'm i'm still working on it i'm still figuring out what uh, the best way to do this is but you know in in time we'll get there all right now let's go to the gear i have the bone weave helm of elusive menace and i've imprinted it with um with an aspect that you know gives me um dodge chance whenever i'm hit by a close enemy now the roll on this is very bad but hey uh, it's better than nothing i guess so yeah my gear like uh, my, my gear is not the best <laughs> this one's quite great though 
uh, 9,000 thorns. I am considering on just getting more damage on this because thorns is great, but um, if I can get something with crit chance, that will be even better. Right, so yeah, there's no there's a, there's no legendary on this either. There's no aspect on it, which is a bit of a shame. Right, so the gloves, adventurer's gloves of surprise, and it it does 21 all stats, 53 dexterity, 4.9% critical strike chance, and two ranks of twisting blades, and then. When I, in, uh, when I evade or shadow step, I leave behind a cluster of exploding stun grenades that deal 381 total physical damage and stun enemies for uh, a half a second. Now, this is great because I am evading a lot, so I'm also stunning my enemies a lot with this, which is just very, very neat. Now, on the legs, uh, these, these, these legs are not that great. Um, the only reason I still have them is because... Uh, they offer me 40 plus 43 intelligence and yeah the um, the aspect on this is aspect of the protector and it gives you a barrier uh, when you hit an elite enemy um, it absorbs 2761 damage for 10 seconds and it can only happen once every 30 seconds now I've also seen that this works on players, so uh, when you hit a player or an elite, uh, you get the barrier. So that's that's actually very strong in both PvE and PvP. Uh, I used to run with the bubble, the big bubble that you know, um, it's like a dome. But I don't, I don't really enjoy that because that makes me like I have to stay in that bubble to get the the damage reduction. I'll be immune in that bubble, right? But I just want to be able to move around and just go wherever and dance through the battlefield. So yeah, that bubble kind of gets in the way of my playstyle with this character. So I'm not enjoying that bubble as much. So yeah, <laughs> uh, the barrier is better for me. Now the boots, these are not the best, but hey... Um, I gotta run with what I have. <laughs> so this one gives Shadow Step a additional charge, which is very, very strong. Uh, killing an enemy with Shadow Step refunds a charge and increases the damage of Shadow Step by two percent uh, for two seconds, up to ten percent. Now this roll, as you can see, is very low because it says uh, one to six percent, but it has two percent, so the roll is very low. The same goes for uh, 10% I, it's 5 to 30% so you know it's a roll on the low side with this aspect but hey I didn't have any other um, I didn't have the same but better so I put this one on there now here uh, the bow I've, I found better bows in stats already but I was impatient <laughs> and I put this very strong aspect on this bow uh, so that's why I'm still running with it. Twisting Blades Orbit for a short time after they return to you, dealing 26% damage of Twisting Blades uh, of Twisting day Blades return damage per hit. Based on the distance the blades returned, the Orbit damage increases up to 52% of the return damage. So the further you are away from the enemy that you um, did the Twisting Blades on, the bigger the damage is. Uh, the, the 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 orbit does like the twisting blade do when they they orbit around you so what you want to do is you want to twist blade you want to use twisting blades on the enemy dash away from him through a crowd or something and then be far away blades come back and you do a lot of damage to enemies close to you when the twisting blades orbit around you now the amulet, I have the ancestral legendary, uh, <laughs> lol, I have the choker of arrow storms, and it's an ancestral legendary amulet, and I implemented it, uh, imprinted it with a marksman's, with a aspect that 
gives me uh, a 10% chance to create an arrow storm at enemy's location and it deals 6,000 damage. Uh, this one's quite strong, but it's optional. I don't like, I'm still looking for good aspects, honestly, uh, better ones. Now, this is a very nice ring. Um, I do want to take off that damage over time and hopefully switch it out with critical strike chance. And well, the aspect um, is quite strong because it uh, has a 46% chance to grant 3% increased critical strike chance for 3 seconds up to 9% uh, when you make a enemy vulnerable. And we're going to be making a lot of enemies vulnerable. So this is just very, very nice to have because uh, your crit chance will go up um, quite, quite fast with this. So yeah, this, this aspect is quite good. I'm not sure what it's called and I don't know where you can find the name of this aspect. <laughs> All right, so the ring, another ring. This one uh, does have crit chance, which is nice, but it's only 2.4% crit chance, which is a shame because I want more crit chance. <laughs> and I imprinted it with a aspect that deals up to 90% increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast, receiving the maximum benefit while you have full primary resource. So if you use a skill and you have full energy um, your damage is increased by 19 percent all right i'm using swords not daggers just because uh, i will you know i just because i do a little extra damage like the daggers are nice and all they're super fast you're super quick with them but I feel like they're lacking on the damage part a bit, so uh, I went with um, the swords and with the increased attack speed that I have, um, I don't really notice that I'm not playing with daggers, honestly, because I'm still super fast and I do a bit more damage. So I'm, I'm loving the swords. I'm, I'm not switching back to daggers anytime soon. So I imprinted it with a increase critical strike chance of 10% against injured enemies while you are healthy you gain 20% increased crowd control duration so enemies are stunned longer and you also have 10% increased critical strike chance when enemies are injured which comes in handy with the healing that we want to do because when we critically hit an enemy we heal for three percent of our maximum life so yeah i'm loving this uh imprinted aspect i'm not sure what the name is because <laughs> i don't know i have no idea <laughs> now the second sword the offhand sword is a all right sword um but there are some wrong stats on there for my build but hey i'm still working on it so the damage to poisoned enemies i'm gonna take that off because i don't you know i don't use poison so it's not really a use useful stat for me so i will have to see if i can get a better stat on that now the aspect i don't know the name of again <laughs> but it's quite strong like critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by 23% for 5 seconds. Now if you do um, puncture and then you do twisting blades and you get some critical hits with the twisting blades, you will have a way faster attack speed. <laughs> and you're just going to shred everything with uh, puncture because puncture is just super fast, especially with this increase in attack speed. Alright, that's it. This is my Shadow Rogue build. Give it a try and let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions, feel free to share them in the comments as well. I'm gonna head off into the Fields of Hatred and become Hatred's Chosen. But before I go, make sure to sub to my channel for more Diablo 4 content and slay that mother freaking like button. I, the PvP bit of this video does not have any commentary, so just kick back, relax and enjoy the gameplay.
Thank you.